Hello and welcome back to another week in the life of an eBay reseller video. My name is Tom, this channel is Tom's Toys 95. So if you're new, I'm a part-time eBay reseller as well as an avid video game collector. I like to source my items from charity shops and now the car boot season is back I'll be sourcing my items from the car boots. I also look at things on Facebook Marketplace, family, friends etc. And I also am located in the town centre of where I live, so there's access to CEX, charity shops, TK Maxx, game, um, cash generator, cash converters, things like that. So I will be popping into shops as well throughout the weeks. So I've made some sales this weekend and I'm going to be going through those shortly when I return home. At the moment, I'm just finishing off at work and I'm listing some stock on eBay that I have purchased from the car boot this weekend and throughout the weeks before. So what I'm going to do is run through a little demo of just how I list some of the items, how I photograph them, etc. So first off, some of the items that I've purchased have been clothing over the last couple of weeks. Now you can hang these up or get a mannequin. At the moment, this is still a small business and still I do this part time, so I don't have necessarily the space to buy a mannequin. So the best thing I would recommend is find something with a plain or neutral background. In this instance, I'm using a table. You want to lay your item flat. If you've got hard flooring, clean the floor so there's no dust or dirt and maybe lay it on your flooring and then you can take a picture. Now eBay does allow you to remove the background from your items so I would recommend taking a square photo of your item and then removing the background. So what you want to do is lay your item out flat like this. You want to take a picture at the front. In this instance there is a Wolves football badge uh, um, on the pocket there so I would recommend taking a close-up photo of that. You've also got the inner label, so you want to take a photo of the label as well as the size label. I always recommend taking a photo of the wash tag as well, so in this instance it's inside, so you just want to take a photo of the front as well as the back. Lastly, you want to take a photo of the back of the shirt, so lay it out again the same as the front, this time you want to take a picture of the back. Now if there's any damage on the item, it's important that you take photos of this, so if there's any rips or scuffs, you want to take photos of that. In this instance, there's a loose thread here. Uh, you can't really see that on camera, but there's a loose thread. So you can either snip that off or just take a photo of it. But if there's any damage, such as holes or whatever, it's always good to declare that. Otherwise, you're looking at getting a return. Whilst you can include the size in your listing, it's always important to put the measurements. So you want to measure it from pit to pit. This is the most popular measurement that people are looking for because this indicates the chest size. So while someone might be a small in this instance, the chest size can vary from different manufacturers. So in this instance, the chest is 19 inches. So if you were to double that, that would be a 38 inch chest. Now that you always want a little bit of wriggle room, so it'd probably be a 36 to 38 chest. And then I always like to measure the length of the t-shirt uh, from the neck to the waist. So we would just measure from here to here. In this instance, it's 22 inches. So in my listing, I would say it's got a 22 inch length and the chest would be 38 inches. The next item I purchased from the car boot last weekend, I'm going to list are these pair of black Nike shorts. So again, it's important to take a picture of the whole of the shorts. So we want a square photo around the shorts. The next I would recommend taking a photo of the Nike logo. If it's Adidas or any other brand, take a photo of that as well. Then you've got the jawstring here, so you can either tie this up so it looks nice or you can leave it loose. Um, in this instance, these are brand new with tags, so I would always recommend taking a photo of the tag. It does have the size label as well, so you want to take a photo of that. We've also got the inner label and the wash label. Now with Nike products specifically, there is a product code on this tag, so you can look up that product code just to check it's legitimate, and it'll also give you a better description of what the item's called. So when you list it in your eBay title, you know exactly what the item is. We've also got a pocket on the back, so I'd recommend taking a photo of the pocket. What you want to do is just 
take as many pictures as possible. Now this is brand new with tags, so if I wash this item, obviously that's going to damage the tag, or I'm gonna to have to take the tag off in order to wash it, and then it's no longer new. So I won't be able to sell it as a new item. So in this instance, I'm not going to wash these. And the only reason I bring that up is because there is a slight mark here. There's a bit of mud. This was purchased from a car boot. So someone's obviously trampled on the item, and there's a little bit of mud there. So I will put that in the description and take a photo of it as well. It's always best to be honest and declare any flaws within the item. Especially with shorts, you want to measure the waist. So in this instance, the waist is rounded, so you want to try and flatten them. And I can see that these are 19 inches. We also want to measure the length of the shorts. So we want to go from the waist down to the, the leg. So we've got 17 inches there. And in things like trousers, shorts, not so much, but if you had a pair of trousers, always measure the inside leg as well, so it'd be the bottom to the groin. Now the next item I'm going to list is this Firestar Marvel Legends figure. So if you just pretend I'm taking photos, you would take a photo at the front, the back. As you can see, when this focuses, there is a little bit of um, creasing here and damage to the corners, so you want to photograph that as well, especially with figures as condition is important. There's a little bit of damage there too. Then if we turn it over, you want to get each corner and then maybe a photo of the figure too. If you wanted to do underneath here or at the side, you can also do that. So the next figure I'm going to list is this Pokemon one. So you want to take a photo of the front, same again, of the back, any close-ups. As you can see, the condition on this one isn't the best. Then you can do underneath and on the top. Now things like video games, you just want to photograph the front, the back. the inside. In this instance there's a crease on the manual so you might want to photograph the crease, the back of the manual and lastly the disc. The underside of the disc has no marks so you don't need to photograph that. If there was a scratch you may want to zoom in on the scratch and mention it in the comments. If you take a picture of the back it's just going to reflect and you're not going to get a good photo. Sometimes it's also good to get a picture of the inside of the cover art because sometimes there's staining or liquid damage. And on the top of here, I don't know how well it's going to focus, but there is some slight creasing on there as well. That's not too bad, but then something like this, I would recommend taking a photo of that as well. Condition is everything with some game collectors, so the smallest thing, um, someone may return this. So I'm going to go ahead now and list the rest of the items that I picked up from the car boot over the weekend. Hopefully those will be listed throughout the week. I'm probably not going to get them all done tonight. I did pick up quite a lot. Now hopefully by the time this video is uploaded, the car boot video would have been uploaded as well. So you can go and check that out if you haven't already. Um, I picked up a load of Furbies. Um, lots of vintage collectible rare ones from the 90s as well as lots of video games and PS1 games and things like that so please go check that video out if you haven't um, otherwise I'm going to be listing most of those this week so I will be leaving work shortly so once I get home I'm going to run through everything that sold over the weekend I think so far we've had about eight sales which is really good so we're going to go through those and see what sold and we're now in the game room, so let's go through everything that sold over the weekend. So up first we have this Felix Bowl and Fork, and now I've discussed this on my channel before because I've sold one, I had two of these. These cost me £1 each from a charity shop, and um, this has sold for £13.99 plus postage, so I'm very happy with that markup. Um, really good sale there. Again, I'm not sure from the last time whether this is a promo item or whether this is something you could have bought. Sometimes you get it free, maybe if you bought, like, I don't know, 24 tins of cat food or something. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, that has sold for 13 99 Happy with that. Now, the next sale only cost me 10 pence to buy from a car boot, I think, or it came in a bundle of stuff. Um, this is this little Stretch Armstrong the Flash. Now, I've only sold this for £2, it's been listed forever, and I was going to delist it and either throw it away, take it to a car boot, or donate it to charity shop. Um, 
but I decided to relist it and I removed the background. It had a really horrible like brown wooden background and it kind of washed the figure out. So I relisted it under Cell Similar, added a plain white background and it sold within three or four days. Now it does have the markings on his chest rubbed off. It's not in perfect condition. There's lots of paint that's like chipped off it. I don't know why you can see that, but it's not great. So um, I didn't think this would ever sell to be honest. So two quid after fees will get like 50p. So it, you know, neither here nor there. But anyway, uh, sales are sale, I suppose. Uh, I am trying to step away from all of the cheap items, so I'm trying to clear all my cheap items out on eBay when the car boot season's back and they're open properly. I'm going to be doing a car boot and just getting rid of all of them. Anything under £5 or £6 on my store, unless it's like a video game, I'm just going to get rid of it because I'm sick of it hanging around. And there's no point, um, you know, recording a video, wrapping an item or, you know, going and picking an item and then going all the way to the post office to make a pound or 50p it's not worth it for me anymore so i'm trying to step away from those cheap items but anyway um sticking with the cheap items um this was listed for three pound 50 plus postage and i have these little jack jack toys uh, from incredibles now there's a set of four so we've got this baby one this flame one metallic one and then another one when he's in a diaper so those four were listed as a bundle for £3 plus postage and this Woody one was listed for £3.50 plus postage. Someone sent me a message saying if they bought both can I refund the postage. So in the end I made them up a listing and just included um, the five figures together as one listing for £6.50 plus post. It's gone internationally so two really cheap sales has gone into a semi-decent sale. Now this figure cost me no more than 50 pence. And these would have been in a bundle. I think they're in either a 5 or 10p box at a car boot. Um, so again, not cost me anything. So I'm very happy with that. Up next, we had a character stylus. So I listed this the other day. Um, it's got a little split in it. It's not in the best condition. Um, it's from PDP Games. So it's not official Nintendo, but it is licensed. Um, it's for the Nintendo DS. Now it's a massive chunky stylus. Um, obviously the stylus is like this big. Um, and it's at least double the size. You got a Yoshi on there, and then you have a wrist strap as well. So that was listed for fourteen ninety nine. Because I was surprised in the value of this when I looked at other characters um, they were selling for similar. So I listed this for fourteen ninety nine. Someone sent me an offer for five pound, which in hindsight is probably about fair. But um, considering I had it listed for fourteen ninety nine, I thought that was a little bit insulting. So I sent an offer back for eleven pound fifty and expected them to counter with like seven or eight pound, and they countered with eleven pound. So I was happy with eleven pound for that, and this only cost me a pound many years ago. The next two items are very good sales. Um, I'm very happy with these two sales. In fact, the next three items are pretty good value. So the first one um, is this Puma watch. So we sold one of these last week. Uh, in a different design that was a black one with a leather strap this one is a brown leather strap and an al aluminium bezel this is a really nice watch um another one that i'd love to have kept but can't keep them all um we've got the puma logo on the crown there uh, it's really big um, i think it's 45 or 15 millimeters um it's really big like watch face um, but yeah, really nice watch. That's all for $89.99. Now I don't have the box or anything for this. This is just loose. Um, that's how it came in from the watch bundle. So we just sell it as seen and that's what I've put in the description. Um, but yeah, whoever bought that, I do hope they enjoy it because that's a really nice watch. And then the next watch that sold, so I sold two watches, is this, it's unbranded. Uh, I did discuss this about two weeks ago in one of my videos where I actually listed it, but look at the shine on that. That's really, really nice. So this is a knockoff or like um, an unbranded version of a very, very expensive watch. Now, if you look at how it glistens in this light, you can imagine how the real thing looks. So this is a really nice, um, I'm trying to think, it's a crystal bezel with a mother of pearl dial. Um, I don't know how well you can see the mother of pearl, but this thing in the middle looks really um, nice. It's almost like an iridescent colour. Um, and then this is the clear version, so I've got five colours in this. I think there's like black, purple, red um, and blue, and this is the clear version. Um, and that's sold for full asking price of $49.99. Now, I could potentially get more for this because the original one of these go for something like eight or nine hundred pounds um i can't remember what their brand is but the guy told me that there's a really um popular 
um, designer brand but because it's literally unbranded on the back of the um, of the dial it doesn't have anything it's just plain silver there's no inscriptions or markings or anything um, I thought I can't ask too much um, but I'm glad that one sold this has gone for 49.99 and I'm very happy with that so between the two watches got 140 pound so that's great and the last thing is my goat my favorite indie game of all time it's guacamole the one two punch collection on the ps4 fantastic game um, this one comes with a map a really thick instruction manual which is good to see especially on the ps4 game and a soundtrack and some dlc which i assume isn't used because this was in fact this one was purchased second hand from games but i did buy some new copies as well but yeah i love guacamole such a fantastic game i spoke about it before once on this channel um but yeah if you haven't played this game um i definitely recommend picking it up especially if you like indie games um it's a nice little beat em up um I don't really know how to describe it, like a side-scrolling beat-em-up game. Um, I guess Metroidvania style, somewhat. But yeah, very good game, very good game. I almost forgot to tell you the price, so I paid eight ninety eight for this from Game in their sale. I think it was new, but open, like when you buy it, um, they don't have it sealed, because Game are like that. They take the wrapper off and keep the disc behind the, the counter, and then they put the new box out on display for everyone to get their grubby hands all over and then you take it to the till and you pay for a brand new game and you get essentially a pre-owned copy because it's not shrink wrapped and it's covered in fingerprints and other grubby bits all over it but anyway i digress so this was 8.98 in the sale and this sold for 24.95 now i bought four copies of these and i think i got two sealed copies and two opened copies so i've kept the sealed copies from my collection and the open copy is also in my collection so I can play it. Um, as I said, this is one of my favourite games. And on hand, I have the Vita version as well. So I really, really love this game. So I've just got back from work now. It's Wednesday and I'm in my garage. I'm just going to pick a few orders that I've sold. I haven't sold all too much this week. I uh, had a good day on Monday, but then only sold like three things um, since then. Tuesday is usually my day off, so don't really expect much footage on Tuesday. Um, but this week, I think I'm going to try and challenge myself not to purchase anything. I have a bad habit of going into town or even at my old job when there was no shops around I would still find a way to buy stuff whether that's Facebook marketplace or on my lunch break trying to go somewhere so I think this week I'm going to try and not spend a penny if I can help it because I spent quite a lot at the gaming market on Sunday and I also went to the car boot on Saturday so I'm just going to try and list list and list so this episode is going to be ma mainly focusing on listing things so obviously I've listed the clothes on Monday which you've just seen and I'm going to try and list some video games and some other random stuff tonight. Um, so let's get into it. Right, this is going to be so contradictory, but it's now Thursday morning. And last night, after I recorded the footage in my garage saying I'm not going to buy anything this week, someone messaged me from the car boot at the weekend. The video should be up by now, by the way. If I haven't said it already, go check it out. Um, but the video from the car boot at the weekend, um, there was a bloke that I met there and... He was selling some cards and stickers and stuff. And if you watched the video, you'd have seen I bought some Mario cards. Well, I took his number and he had 100 packs left. And he texted me to say that his wife sold 60 while he was at the car boot. There's only 40 left, but he's got some books and stuff. So we we messaged back and forth about a price because we, you know, I tried to haggle a little bit. And in the end, I got them for £45. And he texted me last night saying, Do you still want the cards? You can come pick them up. So I completely forgot about that, so I had to shoot out and go pick those up. But these are what they are, so we've got a whole box, they are opened, but inside are 18 sealed packets, so not quite 40, uh, 36 cards unfortunately, but there's 9 in each side, so there's 18 in a box. Now these retail at £2.50 each, um, which is not bad, so I could sell these, but I really want to do an unboxing video on them and unwrap them. And also if you do get any slightly rarer cards, you can um, you can sell them and stuff. Um, so I think I'll have fun opening those. We'll do we'll probably do two parts, so we'll do a box at a time and have nine packs each. So we've got a second box there. And then we've also got five, I won't get all five on camera, but we've got five of these books. And I bought two at the weekend at the car boot off him, so that's seven books in total. So we won't open all of the books, although you do get three packets inside each one, which is good. Um, 
I don't need seven books, so unless I can sell the books on their own, which I doubt it, uh, or at least not for very much, I'll probably have more value in selling them as a, as a set. So I'll probably sell this about maybe four or five of the sets sealed, and then we'll open one each um, to go through the cards that are inside it for the video. Um, so stay tuned for that, we'll probably upload that in the next week or so, um, but that'll be quite fun. So then, what's sold over the last couple of days? Well, not a lot to be honest, um, but up first we sold this Silent Hill disc on the PS1. This is a demo disc, so it's not worth anywhere near as much as the actual Silent Hill game. If this was the Silent Hill disc, this would be worth about 70 to 80 pounds. Unfortunately, it's just a demo disc. Um, so it only goes for a tenner on the best of days. However, mine was slightly damaged. Um, I can't, I don't know if you can see it on camera, um, but on the disc here, there's a few little like marks on it. So there the light passes through it where it's just been scratched off. So this has, the disc has like a, um, a coating on top and that gets scratched. And sometimes if you hold it to the light, light can pass through. Now on the PS1 discs, they're quite um, dark, so you can't actually see any light that passes through. So I don't know whether that's gonna affect the gameplay or not, but I know from collecting PS3 games, if you get any scratches on the top of the disc, and that's what another tip to look out for when you're buying games from car boots and places like that, is if you see scratches on the top, hold it to the light, and if light passes through that little scratch, then there's a chance that that game either won't work or it will affect the gameplay and it'll skip when it gets to those parts. Um, there is a trick you can do where you get a marker pen and like marker over it, um, but that doesn't always work and you can risk damaging the item even more. So in this case, I listed it as damaged and only got half the value that it's worth. So someone sent me an offer for £4.50, which in fairness is not too bad considering it has the damage, so I accepted that. Um, so that's going out today. Uh, I also sold this Assassin's Creed Mirage on the PlayStation 5. Um, my boss sold me this last week and I paid 15 for it. I only sold it for £20.70 plus postage, so not a lot. I was tempted to play this and I still do want to play this, but I just feel that um, I know what I'm like with games um, and he knows what I'm like with games as well. Um, but I'll start a game, I'll do the first mission or two, enjoy it and then I'll move on to another game and then forget to go back to it or it takes six months or a year before I play it again. So what would happen with this is either I wouldn't play it for ages or I would just do the same, um, do a few missions and then, and then go back to Helldivers or something else that I'm playing. So by the time I actually get around to playing this, this is probably going to be like an eight to ten pound CEX pickup. So um, I thought I'd sell it while it's got some value. And lastly, another cheap sale. I think I only sold this for three seventy five around the three to four pound mark. Um, I can't quite remember, but I like to buy steel books and try and strip them down and maximize the profit. So um, one case of this would be Beyond Steel Sky. I had the cardboard sleeve, the steel book, and inside it was some stickers and some bonus things. So uh, what I did was I sold the disc on its own um, for about 12 pounds. I think I paid 15 for the whole steel book. I think I sold the disc for £12, the empty steelbook went for around £10 to £12 as well and then lastly I've got these stickers which were inside the steelbook um, so if you can see there you've got a load of stickers there, you've got some inserts and there is which is I've sellotaped it up now but there's also like a little business card that says Beyond Steel Sky on it so um, that's pretty cool for whoever wants to get that so it might be someone's bought the steelbook for their collection and it's not come with the stickers someone's taken them out and stuck them somewhere so this way somebody can get a replacement for their collection and I also maximize the profit so in total I probably made about £26 worth of sales from that £15 disc so I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to quickly wrap those now. All of them should just go in an envelope, so it's a very easy wrap today. I'm going to chuck those in some envelopes, um, get to work, and then I'll post them on my lunch break. Um, tonight is game night on Thursday, so again, I might be playing some more Helldivers or something. But if I can, I want to try and list, list, and list. So I do plan on going back to the car boot on Saturday morning, so there'll be more stock coming in. Um, but when I say I want to stop buying, it's more so the charity shops um, and the Facebook marketplace pickups. I still want to carry on going to the car boots. I won't be going to car boots every single weekend. I can't afford it or I won't always have the time to go. But I do plan on going to at least two a month um, during the summer seasons um, while it's open. Um, so I have as much stock to keep the videos entertaining for the next year or so. Um, so yeah, until the, obviously until the car boots open again that year. So uh, yeah, 
Um, looking forward to that on Saturday morning. Otherwise, um, not going to be going shopping or buying anything this the rest of this week. So it's just a case of updating you if any more sales come in. Otherwise, we'll have the car boot Saturday and I'll do the roundup and everything. Right, I've been slacking a little bit this week in terms of the week in a life content. So I do apologise if this video is a little shorter than normal. I had the gaming market video, which if you haven't uh, watched yet, go check that out. Um, that was uploaded, I think, Tuesday. Then Thursday, I uploaded the car boot video, which is my first car boot of the year. So again, um, go check that out if you haven't already. Um, I found some really good stuff. So hopefully some of the things in that car boot video you'll see on these videos soon as they'll be selling. Um, I haven't had a chance to list everything just yet. But I am trying. Um, today is going to be a listing day. So after this video is recorded, I'm going to start listing and go through everything that I picked up from the car boot in a different video, which will be uploaded next week. And then after that, I'm just going to be photographing, listing, bashing them out. Now, um, I think I've done quite well this week in terms of um, not only the income, but also number of sales as well. So we have had quite a lot of sales since the last time I um, recorded some footage on Thursday, I think it was. Um, so a few things sold Thursday and I wasn't that confident that I was going to sell much more because the week was going a bit slow. Um, had a really good day Monday or Tuesday over the weekend. We had quite a lot to go through at the start of the video. And then I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday I sold like two or three things, just those games that we went through. So right now I've got quite a lot of stuff to go through. So I'm going to start with this Fireman Sam. Now I believe this went for £10 plus postage and it's just a Fireman Sam playset house thing. I'm very pleased it's gone, it's quite a big bulky item, I'm trying to step away from the bigger bulky items. Um, so it comes with some figures, you've got the Fireman Sam figure, there's a load of accessories in there. And then there's two ladders and I don't know what this is but this I think you put a vehicle on it and it spins around so maybe in the depot you have the... Um, fire truck which I don't have that comes with this and then that spins around and then obviously it leaves so that all went for £10 plus postage so I'm going to get that boxed and wrapped and then we've I've, in front of me I've got a few more things that I'm going to go through that have sold I think we've got eight in total so let's get into them. So the first one is this Firestar figure. This is a 3.75 inch figure that I picked up from the car boot on Saturday. Sold already now I'm a bit disappointed I completely picked this up blind um, did no research, I just saw that it was a Marvel figure in the box, carded, brand new. Surely it's got to be worth some money. Well, not really. Someone was listing one for £6.50. They had 10 in stock. So I actually listed mine more expensive at £3.50 plus £3.50 postage. So it's £7 all in and that sold. Um, this will, unfortunately, be a small parcel because it's too thick for a large letter. But I can get that two ninety nine through the app in Royal Mail, so I saved myself fifty p on postage. So actually, I sold this for four pound minus fees. So I reckon I'll end up with about two pound eighty. So I've probably made very, very, very minimal profit on that. Up next, we got this PS three again, Front Mission Evolved. This was a duplicate that I thought I needed for my collection, and it turned out that I already have it. Or it might have been a condition upgrade. Looking at it, because there's a little um blemish here so I might have bought this for my collection and then upgraded it to a better copy and just listed this one so I think this only went for like three pound plus postage would have only cost me one pound fifty or two pound from CEX so no profit in that either so we're not having too good a start the next game another low sale I will try and get through all the low sales first and then we've got a couple of decent sales towards the end um, so the next sale is this Walking Dead game now this is case and manual only there's no disc um, so this sold for £3.50. Then I took an offer on this Uncharted 2 Steelbook. Now this cost me £2.50 from CEX and this uh, sold for £9 I believe. I added it for £9.99 plus postage. I've sold so many of these over the years. Um, when I first bought this I think I paid £44.99 from game. Um, when it first got released this is my favorite game of all time um, so I really love this game and love this version but I found this version so many times in CEX it's quite common um, despite being a limited edition um, and this always sells for around 10 to 12 pound depending on the condition of it there is a slight blemish there so I couldn't ask for maximum price um, I've sold one in mint condition for 15 pound before um, this one I took an offer it's been lingering for a little while I do actually have another one on my store as well without this it's just the tin cover um, the tin case sorry so that'll that's up for like six or seven pound um, but this went for nine pound altogether I took an offer on this Toy Story t-shirt um, this t-shirt was two pounds from a car boot 
and it's been listed for a while. I'll show a picture of it on the back. It has the gang, it says gang and it's got like Toy Story characters on it, which is pretty cool. Now I am a big Toy Story fan, so I don't know why I didn't keep this. I still don't know why I didn't keep this. This only sold for four pound. I know it might have been three pound. So someone uh, listed it for four pound 99. Someone sent me an offer for, I sent an offer out for four pound. They sent an offer for two pounds, which is what I paid for it. So I, I, count, I counted with three or 350. So I think I only got five pound all in for that, which is a bit disappointing. I thought it would sell for more. I think it's a Boohoo men's um, t-shirt. So yeah, it sold. I hoard every clothing item I find. I'm never gonna um, sell anything, so I might as well sell it when I get it. Now, this one, funnily enough, was 50 pence from a car boot about two years ago. This is the Llama from Fortnite. This is a pop vinyl. Now it's been listed on my store for two years, maybe 18 months. And it finally, finally sold in December for £4.50 plus postage. And I turned my garage upside down, could not find it anywhere. And um, I ended up having to cancel the order. I said sorry to the buyer. Uh, they were fine with it. I cancelled it. And literally two days later, I opened a random drawer and it was just in there staring at me. So I was like, great. So I messaged the buyer back, said, would you like it still? I can. I found it, sent him a photo to prove I found it and said, would you like me to um, send it back out to you? He said, no, don't worry about it. So I relisted it only last week or the week before. So it's been unlisted now for like three months. And I researched the price and it was going for like 15 quid. So I listed this for £11.50 plus £3.50 postage and someone sent me an offer for £10. So I accepted that um, and I actually ended up making £5 more profit than I would have last time. So I'm very pleased with that one. So then the last thing that sold was this Aston Martin 007 pin badge. And I don't know how well that's focusing. Um, now I can't believe how much I got for this. I don't know anything about it. I don't know how rare it is, where you got it from. Maybe you only get it with Aston Martin cars. Maybe you, you buy an Aston Martin from the dealer and they give you this pin badge. I don't know. But the office that I'm currently working in for my job, we had a, another office in the same building that moved out and they left all of their equipment. So the office that we're in was clearing out all of the stuff, throwing it in the skip, whatnot. And they said, is there anything we want to take before we throw it out? Now, they were gonna throw out this big box full of cables and stuff, which in fact, I'll show you after this clip, I'll go get it. But I got a big box of cables, which I haven't listed on eBay yet, but a lot of them are um, still in either in the wrapper or they're still usable. So I might be able to sell some of them. A lot of them I'll probably just take to a car boot. Um, but in that box, on top of it was a pen pot full of pencil shavings, old pencils, pens, random junk, and someone was about to tip it in the bin. And I saw this inside the pot and I said, you know what, let me have this and this and throw the rest away. So inside the pot, there was something else, which was an old arcade coin, or it might have been a... I think it was a Dave and Buster's American Diner like token coin, which when I looked on eBay was going for around $10 because obviously it's an American chain. So I listed that for about eight to 10 pounds. So that was cool, um, but that hasn't sold yet. And then this, this was listed on eBay for 25 pounds. Um, so I took an offer for 20. Someone else was listing it for 25. I listed mine for 22 or 23 just to undercut them a bit. And someone sent an offer, and I can't believe it, but it sold for 20 quid. And that was just a tiny little pin badge that was in a pen pot that was about to go in the skip. And I rescued it and made 20 quid from it. So I'm very happy with that sale. Um, it's tiny uh, little thing, so I need to make sure it's well packed just so it doesn't get lost in the post. Um, but yeah. That's everything that has sold um, over the last couple of days. Now, all of this sold before the cutoff, so all this sold by Friday. It's now Saturday, nothing else has sold. I should have really taken all this to the um, post office yesterday, but I've had a really busy week. I was editing that video all Thursday night for the car boot, and I just haven't got around to posting it yet. So the earliest thing that needs posting is Monday morning, so I'm gonna get all these wrapped um, probably this afternoon and get all those posted Monday. So the next thing to show you is this jacket that I forgot to show you in last week's episode. So I didn't purchase anything this week from CEX, charity shops, anywhere in town. I did purposely, was on a buy-in ban, 
because I went to the gaming market, I went to the car boot and I've been to the car boot again this morning. So I spent lots of money on the car boot and at the market and I'm trying to reduce going to charity shops and things like that because those are the things that I go to as like desperation, as like a, I need fresh stock, I need to list more stuff. So let's go and get something while the car boots are closed. Um, but this was in a charity shop I bought, I think eight days ago and it was only four pounds and I thought it's quite a good deal. Now I do like football and I like football items as you can see from my shirt. So this one is a West Brom jacket. Now it's nothing fantastic, um, but it is quite old. So it's T-Mobile. So this would be around about 2008 to 10 era. Um, so it's a nice Umbro sports jacket. Got the zip up hoodie. I think it's a medium or large. So it's a men's large. Uh, West Brom is fairly local team to me, so that's probably why I found it in there. But um, I've sold West Brom and Aston Villa and Birmingham City stuff quite a lot, and um, it always sells quite well. Not got the biggest of fan bases like compared to like Man United or Chelsea or something, but it's still a decent club to look out for. It's still a former Premier League team, um, so the badge is really nice on there. You've got the Timo Bar sponsor, and you've got Umbro. So I reckon that could sell anywhere between 20 and 30 pounds. I don't remember seeing anything exactly the same when I Googled it. So I found similar jackets that were Umbro and West Brom, but nothing with the T-Mobile logo on. So I may be able to sort of ask my own price. As it's not a big popular club, then it might only get 25, 30 quid. But if I can get that, then I'll be very happy from four pound. So I mentioned to you a moment ago about those pin badges that I found in the pen part and then I got a box of cables. So here's the box. Um, nothing too fancy in here, nothing necessarily really valuable. Um, but there's a lot of these HP Master Kied uh, cable locks. Now I believe these are for laptops and computers. If you leave your laptop at work, you can lock it up to stop people pinching it um, and to keep it tied to the desk. So these go, only go for like £4 each, maybe £5 plus postage. But there's 10 bags of these in this box. So they are all down the side here. Um, and they go up. So we've got like one, two, three, four, so on. So there's quite a lot of those in there. And then if we look deeper into the box, you've got a few loose ones. So there's quite a lot in here that I could um, get some money for. So this one here goes for around about 5 or £6. I think, to be honest, I'll probably take this to a car boot to start with. And anything that doesn't sell at the car boot, I will then list on eBay. In here, we've got a laptop charger. And I looked it up, and it's a specific one for a few models. So that's been listed, I think, for 14 or £15. Pounds. So that one's quite decent. And then we've got a few of these random cables. So this, this might be the one that's listed, actually. This is like a specific cable for a specific model. Um, so that goes for quite a bit of money. Um, there's a few of these, like I think that's an Ethernet port, and then we've got a HDMI, so it's like a DVI cable into a USB. So again, I don't know how much these cables are worth necessarily. I don't think there's a great deal of value in here, but for free, I can't really complain. So yeah, we've got more um cables so this is for a dell computer so i could probably get about six to eight pound for each of these chargers so i reckon out the whole box i could probably get about 50 quid so yeah not bad for free so then this is the results this is the part of the video where i round up everything that's gone on in the week and talk you through all of the sales and the numbers so in terms of items sold we've sold 18 things this week the record so far this year has been 19 in terms of the weeks that we're doing so the weekly total the best has been 19 and we are on 18 so not too far away from that um sold i think this might be the best week in terms of um, um sold prices Partially due to the watches, but we have had a few decent sales as well. Sold that Assassin's Creed game for £20. We, I can't remember whether that, oh, we sold that pin badge for £20. I sold that Guacamole game for £25. So we've had quite a few decent sales. So, um, But also amongst that have been some tatty, sort of cheap sales. Um, but they all even themselves out in the end. So the gross income then is £332.10. And, and that is for the um, what they sold for and the postage. Now, if I take the postage off that £332.10 and the eBay fees, 
that leaves me with a total of £234.95. Now, all of the items cost me £59.53p, which isn't too bad considering we had the watch for £10, the Assassin's Creed game cost me £15, and the Guacamole game cost me £9. So everything else um, was really cheap. It was either a pound, two pound, 50p, some of them are 10p, um, some of them are even free. So we haven't paid that much for the items that have sold. Um, so the total cost of everything paid was 59.53. So if we take that off, that leaves me with a total profit of 175 pound and 42 pence. So I'm happy with that sum. Uh, I haven't put that many hours in this week. I've been listing, so I've put quite a lot of time into listing, but in terms of buying, haven't been to charity shops. Um, haven't been on Facebook Marketplace or anything, so um, I've purposely done that, as I said in the earlier video, um, been to the gaming market, went to the car boot last weekend, and I want to focus on going to the car boots again, because that's where I get my most profitable items, um, and that's what I enjoy most about this this hobby, is going to the car boots, you never know what you're going to find, I enjoy getting up early, getting out, getting some sunshine, um, going for a walk, and uh, buying some stuff, so... The only negative I've got for this week is that nice crystal watch that sold. Um, the lady wants to return it, saying that it's too big for her wrist, which is a shame. Uh, as a business seller, I have to automatically accept a return. Now, I've added it in the totals because she hasn't returned it yet, and I don't refund until it's been returned. Um, and because she's accepted that it's her fault in the sense of it's a change of mind and there's not anything faulty with it, she has to pay for the return. So if she doesn't send it back, which a lot of the time people don't, I'd imagine this one she will because it's an expensive item and she'll want the money back. So um, if I do have to refund it, then the total will be £132.02. £2. So it's still a decent week, um, still better than last week, still better than most weeks. Um, but I was really hoping for that 175 um, but we'll see how we get on that we, I might not have to refund the watch I just need to wait and see whether she returns it uh, it is a shame because it is an unbranded watch so out of all the watches I have uh, which is quite a lot of them um, they're all branded or designer brands and they're really good watches um, the one that she bought there's five of them in different colours and they're all unbranded so they're very difficult to sell um, because it, no one's really going to be searching for those watches on eBay. They just sort of have to stumble on it by accident and go, oh, that's a nice watch, and then buy it. So I was pleased that I sold one, and I was surprised that I sold one, to be honest. Um, I thought I'd have to sell those at like a car boot or something. So it's a shame that it's been returned, but if it doesn't fit, if it's too big, then it is what it is. Um, so rather than buying this week and going out to charity shops, I've been trying to list. So I've listed 20 items in total this week. And I've drafted 13, so most of those 13 are the Furbies, and there's a few other bits that I bought from the car boot last week. And I want to try and finish all of last week's listings before I move on to listing this week's car boot pickups. So that video is coming out soon. And there's a little spoiler, if you have got this far into the video, I do appreciate it. Um, I picked up an absolute banger of a pickup, and I paid up for it. I didn't know if it was going to be genuine or not. Um... I've ran it for a Facebook group of people that collect this item and they've all certified it as genuine and when I tell you the value is like tenfold I'm not joking so I paid a decent chunk and it's worth approximately 10 times the amount I paid so I am very happy with that um, pickup and I can't wait to show you in the car boot video so that should be being uploaded around about Wednesday night I think um, probably won't be Tuesday, I'll probably upload that Wednesday, so look out for that on Wednesday or Thursday, and I'll get that uploaded and you can see what item that is. But that is by far, um, if I sell it, I don't know if I'm going to sell it yet, but um, that is by far my favourite, if not best, my, not only my favourite, but also my best pickup ever. Um, it's something I love, um, something that I do collect, and it's something that is probably the most valuable item that I've ever picked up. So stay tuned for that. Um, and that is coming out in the week. Otherwise, that's everything. So I've 18 things, made £175 profit. So thank you very much for watching. That concludes the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. It really helps the channel. If you are new here, then I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did get this far, thank you very much for watching. Um, all I've got to say really is that I upload these videos every week. So if you enjoy this sort of format or content, then please subscribe and catch me on next week's episode. Otherwise, see you later.